why there's four chairs here? What? You're sitting there for the canters. Yeah, yeah. We got a couple. It's for the, it's for the canters. It's for the canters. Huh? It's like for Elijah. Lechad 
need page 20 of your prayer books. Please stay up on your feet. Please so rise. Face the door later. Uh, I did, I did, I did, I. Ready? And welcome the Sabbath bride. Shabbat Shalom, please be seated. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> we say happy birthday, Holy Land, happy birthday to the state of Israel. It is interesting to reflect on how states age versus how people age. 13 years into the state of Israel, there had already been a Sinai campaign. Just a few years later in Israel's teenage years was the 67 war, and then in its early 20s, the 73 war. It has been a life that has been full of difficulty. And yet again and again every year for all the seriousness and all the ups and downs it means to be part of, to care about the state of Israel and to live there and to love it, still we arrive at 74, 75, a fullness <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it took us back a year. A 75, but it is hardly the end. It is just the beginning. And even as we pray for shalom, peace for the Holy Land, and we hope that all the bumpy roads shall become smooth again, 
We look at the faces that are in this room, from the youngest that are there to our confirmands, to the oldest in the congregation, and we gather together to celebrate on this incredible night. But now at this time, we invite you to share words of greetings, to share hello with those around you. Shabbat Shalom. Continuing on pages two and three of Mishkan Tefila, our prayer book, I invite forward our bat mitzvah, Addie, and her parents, Ron and Lisa, to lead us in candle blessing this evening in honor of her bat mitzvah, pages two and three. God's first creation, our image of hope. Hope, hope for, for a world, world without oppression and war. Hope, hope for a world without hatred and plague. Hope, hope for a world where each of us can see the spark of holiness that burns within every living being. being. Hope, hope for, for a world radiant with love, luminous with the light of God's presence. In your light do we see light. Mazel. It is a pleasure at this time to invite forward the confirmation class of 5783 to come up to lead us in Kiddush. Kiddush can be found on pages four and five. Tonight, as we gather in the warmth and peace of our sanctuary and our community, we pause to reflect on the miracle of our time. We who celebrate our confirmation have never known a world without a Jewish state. The dream of a millennia of generations who wandered through the brutality and loneliness of exile flourishes. Our return to our ancient homeland, the answer to millions of prayers across the years is at once miraculous and overwhelming. And the awe it inspires, and yet, even in our celebration, we know the work is not yet done. May the sweetness of this wine and the sweetness of this Shabbat inspire us to build the Israel we all yearn to see. May we dedicate ourselves on the Shabbat to the sacred task of making the sacred soil flourish and to en enabling all who dwell there to live in peace. Oh. 
Chaim, Chaim and Chaim. Mazel Tov. Premium. Premium. <laughs> Premium. <laughs> the exile of the Jewish people is bookended by dreams. What do I mean? Dreams play an important part of the moment when the Jewish people will leave the land that God promised them with the Joseph story. All of Joseph's dreams ultimately bring the Jewish people to Egypt. And the end of the exile will come with the words of Theodore Herzl, Ein tier zu, ein zo agada. If you will, it is, is no dream, but for him it was only a dream because he died in 1904 before there was a state and never lived to know that his own daughter died in the concentration camp of Theresienstadt. And when you only have dreams, you cannot ultimately survive. And so it is turning the dream into reality that the formation of the Jewish state is about. And so with these words of the Baruch Hu, we say, am I awake? And yes, we are awake. We can pinch ourselves, we are awake, we are there. We have a holy land. Please rise as we continue with the Baruch Hu and I am, am I Awake on page 28. <laughs> Israel, the land of Israel, was the birthplace of the Jewish people. Here their spiritual, religious, and political identity was shaped. Here they first attained to statehood, created cultural values of national and universal significance, and gave to the world the eternal book of books. After being forcibly exiled from their land, the people kept faith with it throughout their dispersion and never ceased to pray and hope for their return to it and for the restoration in it of their political freedom. Please join me. The state of Israel will be open for Jewish immigration and for the ingathering of the exiles. It will foster the development of the country for the benefit of all its inhabitants. And it will be based on freedom, justice, and peace as envisaged by the prophets of Israel. It will ensure complete equality of social and political rights 
to all its inhabitants, irrespective of religion, race, or sex. It will guarantee freedom of religion, conscience, language, education, and culture. It will safeguard the holy places of all religions, and it will be faithful to the principles of the Charter of the United Nations. Page 34, please rise. be seated. The story of our people's relationship with the land of Israel is not just that we lived there. It actually begins with us going there. It started with Abraham when God said, Lech lecha me'artzacha, to go from your land to a land that I will show you. And so Abraham sojourned with his family down from Mesopotamia to the land of Canaan to live in what became known as the land of Israel. A few generations later, his grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren made their way to Egypt, where after a few generations there arose a new king who did not know from Joseph and enslaved our people. And in a moment we will sing the words of Micha Mocha, words of the triumphant nature of our redemption from slavery and the beginning of our journey from Egypt to Israel. And this week, as we are marking that journey, leaving Egypt still in these few weeks after Pesach. This week we also celebrate our people's arrival once again, so many generations later, on Yom Ha'atzma'ut. But knowing that Yom Ha'atzma'ut did not come to be in one day, it wasn't just they woke up and said, hey, tomorrow we should have a state of Israel. It was the dream of Herzl expressed in 1898. And for two generations, Jews moving to the land of Israel from all over the world, 
to build what became the nascent state. There are a few red letter days on our people's history. One is our redemption from Egypt, and one is Yom Ha'atzma'ut. The third, I would add, would be the reunification of Jerusalem just 19 years later. So tonight, as we sing these words of Micha Mocha, and as we always do, imagine our ancestors going forth from Egypt. Let us also imagine our ancestors making their way to Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, to what became, after many, many thousands of years, once again, our homeland. Micha Mocha, page 40.
page 45, please read with me. We are a people in whom the past endures, in whom the present is inconceivable without moments gone by. The exodus lasted a moment, a moment enduring forever. What happened once upon a time happens all the time. We celebrate our miracles and the miracle of creation in this day of Shabbat with the words of Vishamru. <laughs> camp is just over a month away. <laughs> we ask everyone to please rise. Yeah. 
หัสยโยชาโคอารุคาทาทนายเมฆาเยอาโคอาทาคาดุชเฟชิมคาคาดุชอุครชิบโคยอมยาลลุคาเซลาบารุคาทาทนายBe seated. Raise your hand if you have had the privilege of visiting the land of Israel. Isn't that a miracle? Wow. How many of you, when you were there, had the opportunity to plant a tree? Planting a tree in Israel is sublime. It's uncomfortable, especially if you have bad knees or a bad back. <laughs> But in order to plant a tree in Israel, you arrive on what seems to be ground that would not be amenable to a tree. You take your little trowel and you dig a little hole in this very Dry, rocky, inhospitable soil, and they hand you a little sapling of, say, something like a cypress, and you plant it in the ground, and you pile the earth back around the roots, and it never seems to hold. It's not like. The ground here in the United States that is like clods of earth—it's just pebbles, stones. And you take your foot and you tamp it down and water it a little bit, and you walk away. And you can't believe that that little bit of life is going to live. We used to joke that actually the JNF workers would just come by after the bus would leave and rip them all out again. Hand them off to the next batch of unwitting Jewish tourists. <laughs> But they assure me that's not what happens, because if you look around the land of Israel, there are forests teeming with life. Seventy-five years ago, there were barely half a million saplings who called the land of Israel their home. And over the seventy-five years that have transpired since. The fifth day of ER in the auspicious year. That population has grown to millions, and despite wars and threats, that inhospitable soil has seen those saplings plant their roots deep, deep into the earth, as if they always belong there. And with just a little bit of water and that bright Israeli sunshine, those little saplings have grown to be towering trees. And you can walk in those forests, in their shade and in their peace, and wonder at their growth at all. That there was a time when you wondered whether they would even live. Just to plant a tree in the land of Israel is a prayer. Just to walk in the forests of Israel is an expression of thanksgiving and wonderment. Just to see how many roots have sunk themselves into that ancient, inhospitable land is a sign of God's presence in life and in the world. We take time for silent prayer and meditation.
For centuries, thousands of years, the land of Israel seemed to be almost a figment of our imagination. It was this dream, this place that didn't even really even exist on a map except in our imaginations towards which we would aspire, towards which we would point ourselves in prayer each day, toward which we would turn our attention each Passover and say next year in Jerusalem. And so it was the custom that we would mark that time of leaving Egypt with the celebration of Pesach and count the 49 days of the Omer until our arrival at that waypoint before arriving in that sacred holy land around the mountain of Sinai to learn not how to get to the holy land but what it was we were destined to do in it and how we were to live those days before we would arrive. And as we continue our congregation's practice of counting the Omer each day, passing through journeys of decision and discernment and choice and hope, we continue as we count the Omer this evening. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kishanu b'mitzvotav, Today is the 22nd day of the Omer, which is three weeks and two days of the Omer. Actually, the 23rd day of the Omer. This is why I became a rabbi and not an engineer. <laughs> the 23rd day of the Omer, which is three weeks and two days of the Omer.
12, 1948, David Ben-Gurion convened the Provisional Council in Tel Aviv for what was the most important meeting in the history of the Jewish people in 3,000 years. The outcome of that meeting would decide the fate of the Jewish state. A few days earlier, the U.S. State Department had warned the Jews that they were outnumbered and could not prevail in a war against the Arabs. They recommended the Jews accept a truce that would avoid the coming Arab invasion but would postpone the establishment of the Jewish state perhaps forever. Yigal Medin, the military commander, gave a military assessment of the situation. The conventional forces of the neighboring states, he said, with their equipment and weapons have an advantage. The question is to what extent our people will be able to prevail against that force considering the morale and ability of the enemy and our own tactics. It's been proven many times, he said, that the numbers and the formations are not always decisive. If I wanted to sum it all up and be cautious, I'd say at this moment our chances are about even. If I wanted to be more honest, I'd say the other side has a significant advantage. Ben-Gurion countered with updates about armament shipments that were coming from Europe and said, I dare to believe in victory. We shall triumph, he said. Silence permeated the room. If they voted to accept the truce, they would not have a state, but might live to fight another day. And if they rejected the truce, they would have their state but a bloody battle to secure it. The moment of truth arrived. The decision had to be made. Ben-Gurion called for a vote. By six to four, the council rejected the American proposal. They would announce the establishment of the Jewish state in two days just before Shabbat. All that was left was to decide on a name. The final choices were Zion and Israel. Ben-Gurion urged the latter. One official explained that the moment the name was proclaimed, everyone realized instinctively that it could, in fact, be no other. The children of Israel, the people of Israel, the land of Israel, the heritage of Israel, all these had existed in reality and metaphysically for so many thousands of years. It had to be the state of Israel. And so it was. In the Torah portion, which we read this week, Parshat Dachrimot and Kedoshim, in chapter 19 of the book of Leviticus, we read the following. Do not turn to idols and do not make molten gods for yourselves. I am Adonai, your God. The sages taught that it wasn't just turning away to other gods that was implied in this action that was forbidden. It was the turning that was the problem. Because it meant that if I was turning away from having God as the sole focus of my conscience, that meant I might be focused on something else. And so in the Talmud, it says that this commandment really means don't remove God from your consciousness. And that the real sin of what this commandment implies is not turning to the Sphinx or to some crystals and worshiping them. What it really means is losing your awareness of the fact that everything that surrounds you in every moment is, in fact, God and a miracle. For someone like me, with attention deficit disorder, this means I sin a lot. If you've ever had a conversation with me and watched my ADD in action, it can be somewhat disconcerting, perhaps even offensive, when all of a sudden my attention goes, say it, Greg, Thank you. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm lost. The fact is that most of the time, 
we don't think about this commandment too much. When you think about the Ten Commandments, you may be worried about other ones. Depending on who your friends are, do not murder may be an issue. <laughs> Depending on what's going on financially, do not steal may be in the equation. Depending on how busy your calendar is, thank God not you, but other people who are not here tonight, you shall keep Shabbat and make it holy might be a problem. <laughs> Honor your father and mother, always an issue. Do not commit adultery. We're not talking about that tonight. <laughs> but most of us, when we think about don't turn to idols, we're like, we're okay. That one we're not so worried about. Except what the... Degel Machane Ephraim, a Hasidic commentator, teaches us is actually most of the time that's the one we are trespassing. Because we start to begin to think that the stuff that is of our immediate concern that is distracting us and taking our attention away from our fundamental awareness of just how amazing and holy and wondrous is everything we see in any given moment because we're more worried about narishkeit, silly things, temporal matters, that we often think of actually as the objects of our worship, the things that we actually think are of ultimate consequence, that's the idolatrous moment. We're all a bunch of sinners. Me especially. Congratulations. But, on a day like today, on Shabbat, we are able to return our attention to the miraculous. Daniel Gordas, in his book, The Promise of Israel, wrote, we are witness to an extraordinary phenomenon, a miracle of a people recovering its story, sanctifying its memory, reviving its language, and most important, securing its freedom. Each of us woke up today, and I'll bet none of us worried whether the state of Israel would be there. The bulk of us who are under the age of 75 can't even recall a memory when there was not a Jewish state. We take for granted that each and every day, a Jewish 787 departs from Miami and 12 and a half hours later lands in Tel Aviv. We take for granted that that land has more water because of its technological prowess than it knows what to do with. We take for granted the fact that you can hear a cellular telephone call extremely clearly on the surface of Masada. We take for granted that I can wander that land from north to south, east to west, and feel completely safe and secure. We marvel at the technology that land produces. We marvel at the strength of its military. We marvel at how many orchestras that one country creates. We marvel at the fact that it has won a gold medal at the Olympics. There is, in every square inch of that land, a miracle to behold. In every single day, that one is there, or not there. And if we go through life, whether we are Israeli or American or some other nationality, but as Jews, and we do not attend our focus to an awareness of how many miracles surround us, then we are sinning. Because we think there might be something more important than the realization and appreciation of that fundamental, extraordinary miracle. The state of Israel, Daniel Gordis, has become a proverbial lighthouse, a small and still threatened country that in the midst of all its other challenges shines a beacon of light into the darkness of the world we inhabit. Israel is 
as the prayer written in its infancy to celebrate its holiness declares, Reshit Michat Ulatenu, the first flowering of our redemption. That redemption is not one and not yet complete, but it is flowering, it is blossoming, it is a miracle, and for that we offer thanks. O heavenly run, protector and redeemer of Israel, bless the state of Israel, which marks the first flowering of our redemption. Shield it beneath the wings of your love. Spread over it the canopy of your peace. Send your light and truth to all who lead and advise. Guide them with your good counsel. Send your loving shelter of protection to those who defend our holy land and bless their efforts with triumph. Establish peace in the land and fullness of joy for all who dwell there. And let us say together, Amen. Amen. It's my privilege to invite up the members of our confirmation class, the class of 5783, to join me on the Bema. We ask everyone to please rise. members of our class of 5783 have been in this sacred space many times. Some of you celebrated your bar and bat mitzvah. Some of you were named here. Many of you helped to lead services here, have grown up here. You are part of an extraordinary dialogue between the creator of the universe and our people. And it has been such a blessing for Marcy and me to share in your conversations with each other and us and with the divine as you have wrestled with small things and great. The blessing of your presence here is a light that shines for all of our congregation and community. We pray that the light of Torah will be one that will guide you, that the land of Israel and this synagogue and this community will be your homes, that the friendships that you have built amongst each other will be lasting and nourishing, and that together you will know only the blessings of goodness and joy and health and peace. of God's presence that shines upon you and from inside you and between you 
Be a light to guide you on your way towards lives filled with holiness, happiness, joy, and health, blessing, and peace. And together we say, Amen. We remain standing before the open ark as our thoughts turn to all those in need of God's healing presence. May the one who blessed our ancestors bless all those in need of healing. In our prayers this evening, Lila Abrams, Meredith Abramson, Hannah Cowie, Jim Alexander, Len Baraganelli, Fred Belkin, Sandy Berman, Margie Berman Block, Kathleen Bowersox, Richard Brock, Andy Broido, Ed Burns, Barbara Butan, Craig Cartsons, Andrea Colton, Chloe Thomas, Michael Costin, Shelley Darman, Hud Engelhart, Carl Feuerstein, Rhonda Finlay, Paul Finger, Justin Friedman, Jim Freed, Marty Framowitz, Larry Guise, Jennifer Goldberg, Larry Goldstein, Ross Goldstein, Pam Graber, Jane Greenberg, Michael Halley, George Hankin, Bonnie Hirsch, Janine Hirschhorn, Marsha Hoffman, Heath Hammer, Susan Ivers, Sherman Jacobson, Ken Kenoff, Marilyn Cass, Murray Koppelman, Ethan Kotler, Joan Kramer, Jonathan Levin, Shira McGagan, Misha Allen, Ben Ari, Vachaya Esther, Mordechai Ben Sarah Fega, Joel Nielsen, Trishad Nixon Jr., Michael Perlman, Claudia Plasky, Brittany Ramos, Jackie Robinson, Shirley Ropp, Eileen Rosenbaum, Helene Rosenblum, Alan Rosenfeld, Linda Ross, Myra Rubenstein, Abby Shine, Gary Seiden, Ronald Charlack, Kenneth Shore, Harvey Siegel, Nancy Sinrod, Samuel Vainberg, Joan Weidenfeld, Tom Weidenfeld, Carol Weller, Arthur Wasat, Marissa Rubel, and those names that you add as my hand meets your gaze. Remain standing and continue on page 282 with Alenu Lashabeach. It's my privilege to welcome Marcy Schultz, our congregation's Vice President of Religious Activities, to offer greetings from our Board of Trustees. Shabbat Shalom. 
What an honor it is to be with you tonight to celebrate Israel's 75th. Unbelievable, isn't it? I would like to wish Mazel Tov to Addison and Ron and Lisa. I know you are going to be fantastic at your bat mitzvah. Mazel Tov from the congregation to you and your family. The confirmation class. What a wonderful job you all did tonight reciting Kiddush and having a beautiful blessing. I am incredibly proud of you. And when I saw all of you standing up here, it started already for me. So guys, the weekend is starting and I'm incredibly proud of you. Mazel tov. Listen to our new podcast, Essential Questions with Rabbi Dan. <laughs> the kids are gonna be on the podcast. <laughs> Wednesday, May 3rd, each episode of our podcast will pose essential questions to invite a conversation with remarkable people in the Jewish world and in our community to consider those questions and what the answers mean. New episode will be every Wednesday. Visit tbeboga.org, essential questions to listen. Join Brett Stevens in conversations with Rabbi Dan Levin to explore important questions as Israel celebrates 75 years of independence on Wednesday, May 3rd at 7 p.m. Register for a special meet and greet or for general admission at tbeboka.org. Brotherhood is so excited to host a Mother's Day brunch, and any mothers in the room, I'm sure, are thrilled they're going to do that for us. Sunday, May 14th at 11 a.m. at the Schaefer Family Campus. Please visit tbeboka.org to register. Also, we invite you to join us for Tikkun Lev Sha'avot. Thursday, May 25th at 7.30 at the Beck Family Campus. We will culminate our seven-week journey, counting through the Omer, with our guest scholar, Rabbi Karen Kadar, who actually used to work here. She was an assistant rabbi, so some of you may come to the event to give a hello and a nice to see you again. Visit tbeboka.org to register. Rabbi Kadar will then join us for Shabbat evening services on May 26th at 6 o'clock at the Schaefer Family Campus. She will share insight and wisdom about the transformative path from Passover to Shavuot. Please join us for a continued discussion with Rabbi Kadar at an optional dinner following services. Guess where you can visit to register? tbeboka.org. Temple Bethel's annual dinner and meeting will be held on Thursday, June 1st. Dinner begins at 6 o'clock, followed by the meeting at 6.30, where we will confirm the 2023-24 operating budget, the new board of trustees, and present awards. Register for the dinner and the meeting at tbeboka.org. We hope that you will stay after services and schmooze, see old friends, meet new friends, and as you leave this, mor this afternoon, this, e this evening, excuse me, please consider making a contribution to our Sadaka Fund that will support the Israel Movement for Progressive Judaism. You can donate by placing, this still kind of blows me away, you can put cash in the Sadaka box, you can scan a QR code, and you can even put your credit card in some funky machine, which I think is unbelievable. So please donate, however you do it, just please donate. Visit tbboka.org for information about these and many other wonderful Temple Bethel events. Shabbat Shalom. One additional announcement, uh, we asked members of our confirmation class following services to stay where they are and for their families to please come and sit towards the front of our sanctuary immediately following services for a short consecration ritual. If you are not in the confirmation class, we ask that you please leave the sanctuary quickly after services so that you can go get your dinner if you're staying for dinner or Oneg Shabbat and we can have our moment together with our class. Do you know how many Memorial Days there are for an Israeli family in a year? The Memorial Day for the state, and the Memorial Day for the unit, and of the command, and of the school, and of the village. And the Memorial Days of mine, what about them? The day that he was born, and the day he fell, and the day I saw him for the last time. 
And what about the memorial moment when you pass by the tree he fell from when he was six years old? And the similar moment when you see someone in the street who studied with him in class in the memorial second because someone looks like him. In the places, they are so trite yet awesome. There is not only his gravesite, there is the monument of the command and the memorial board in his school. Outside of this is the place he was killed. In this land, it is never too far from home. And his place at the table. And when guests and those invited are at the table, you always think whether to put out his plate. And when they ask you in the government office or just regularly, how many children you have, what to answer, three or four? As we think about all those who gave their lives for the sustenance and the safety of the state of Israel, we also think about those whose yard sites are observed on this Shabbat. If you are observing yard site, when you hear the name of your loved one recalled, we ask that you rise and remain standing, and we as a congregation will join you for the recitation of Kaddish. On this Shabbat, we remember Ruth Appel, Ida Applebaum, Esther Glowitz Arno, Daniel Barry, Elliot Benjamin, Harold Bergner, Rose Birkenwald, Etta Braz, Marlene Breyer, Sally Broido, Meyer Cartine, Isabel Castillo, Sidney Chaikin, Julio Chavez, Laura Chanoy, Janert Cohen, Ilsa Cohn, Samuel Solomon Davidson, John Durr, Gertrude Deutsch, Lloyd Doctor, Bell Eater, Marion Pollinger, Fine Silber, Herman Fink, Richard Fisher, Stanley Gale, Samuel Gallup, Anne F. Gelfand, Sanford Glanz, Esther Goldberg, Saul Goldenberg, Leslie Goldstein, Gloria Goodman, Lillian Granick, Charles Greenberg, Benjamin Green, Edward Greenfield, City Greenfield, Janius Grunwald, Abraham Grunwald, Harriet Hames, Ross Higier, Lawrence Hoffman, J. R. Jonas, Norman E. Utrecht Sr., Sidney Candell, Shirley Kaplan, Herbert Kirshner, Martha Kirshner, Rex M. Klein, Beatrice Klein, Marilyn Konis, Hyman Konis, Walter Kramer, Max Krasilnik, Sidney D. Kronish, Harold Kurzman, Florence Lila, Joseph Lessons, Mark C. Levine, Nettie G. Levitt, Herman Lukoff, Batya Mallet, Klein, Sophia Estelle Marcus Feenberg, Miriam Melman, Ivan Meissner, Manny Meth, Jim Moran, Ron Nelson, Molly Neistat, Ethel Orkin, Bobby Ornstein, Morgan Nathaniel Patterson, Maurice D. Plow Sr., Sophie Gore Pomerantz, Louis Resnick, Alan Richland, Melrod Ritter, Louis Robbins, Harry Roth, Phoebe Rosenberg, Richard Rosenblum, Florence J. Ruskin, Louis Sachar, Dorothy Sheffman, Carolyn Lowe Schwartz, Harry Scoop, Marilyn Seskin, B. Shane, Beatrice Shear, Deborah Shinen, Alexander Shiowitz, Sydney Simon, Alice Simon, Edith Singer, Rachel Solnick, Benjamin Soloway, Alan Spector, Celis Spellman, Lillian Stewart, Darlene Suma, Elaine Surnammer, Benjamin Taylor, Esther Thompson, Lillian Traubin, Israel Trestman, Saul Turk, Alvin Charles Unger, Lillian Van Wy, Henry Weinstein, Jean Weiss, Arnold Witt, Ada Wolf, Merle Wolf, Celia Wolin, Iris Stewart, Yavarkovsky, and David Young. We add those whom we've lost in the last 30 days, whose memories we cherish in the 30 days of Shloshim. Donna Messina, Sherry Endelson, Bernard Tanner, Sherry Klein, Harry A. Gaines, Jerry Gorlick, Michael Sprinzen, Clifford H. Goldman, Helene Brown, Carol Greifer, Harold Gaynor, Jeffrey Legum, Mitchell Cronish, and Jerry Springer. If anyone else is observing a yard site or has the name of a loved one to recall, please add any additional names aloud. And for those who are joining us online, we add your remembrances to ours. We turn now to page 294. We rise and give thanks to God for the gift of life together with the words of Kaddish. Yitkadal v'yit kadash shamei rabah, be'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute, b'chaye chon u'v'yome chon u'v'chaye d'chol be'it Yisrael, Ba'agala uvizman kariv v'imru amen. Yehe shame rabba mevarach le olam u ame amaya. Yit barach v'ish tabach v'it pa'ar v'it romam v'it nase. 
Viet Hadar, Viet Ale, Viet Halal, Shame de Kucha, Brihu, the Ela, Min Kol, Birchata, Vishirata, Tush Bechata, Venechemata, Damiran, Be Amma, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shalama, Rabba, Min Shemaya, Vechayi, Malenu, Ve Al Kol, Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. O se shalom bim romav, hu ya ase shalom, alenu ve al kol Yisrael, vimru, amen. May the one who makes peace in the high heavens grant peace to us, to all Israel, and to all who mourn, and together we say, amen. amen. I'd like to thank our choir for their beautiful singing this evening. Thank you so much. And for our soloists, Jessica and Michelle, thank you to our musicians, to Vindia and Scott and Jeff and James to in the booth, Ray and Ron and Hunter and uh, Kira back there. And we'd like to invite all of our confirmation students and our bat mitzvah Addy to help us in the leading of Motsi. And we conclude with the words of Hatikva. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.